Hi everybody, <clears throat> I'm Dr. Randall George Nazawa, the Bounce Back Blind Guy, and this is Transforming Adversity into Opportunity, my story. Okay, uh, going back to in the March, this might be the 28th, heading into the 29th, 2007, um, my friend Turi called me very late at night asking me to come over to their home in this retirement community in, in Gig Harbor because, uh, well, she was whispering and I found out she had locked herself in the bedroom. Um, well, it was late and I was tired and I was thinking, eh, you know, maybe I'll just see those guys tomorrow morning. But I said, oh, I'll just go down. And anyway, what transpired is that as I was sitting with uh, John in their in their kitchen at the kitchen table, uh, why I think Turi had locked herself in the bedroom was that uh, uh, I think she was uh, perusing the internet and found an article uh, in an Oregon paper about a naturopathic doctor that had uh, abused his girlfriend. Uh, attempted to kill her and then she somehow got away anyway the name she found in there I believe was a John Brandon well the description said her husband John Williams now could it be that John Brandon was this John Williams guy anyway he she I believe confronted him about that and uh, I think she kind of figured it out that it was true. And so, you know, she called me and she said, would I come down? And I said, well, I didn't know what was going on with all this. So, you know, I just went down because, you know, these are friends. And I wanted them as an elderly couple to have a, you know, really good life. And, uh, you know, they, they were both married previously and uh, they, they found each other. And uh, I was uh, wanting to help to to, oh, you know, to, to see that the, they uh, could uh, live out the remainder of their lives and as much happiness as possible. So anyway, I went down there. But, uh, and as you know, uh, things didn't work out the way uh, I had anticipated and I, I got to uh, witness uh, John getting his uh, pistol and shooting Tree twice and her dying. And, uh, you know, I'm still sitting at the table. So what do I do, right? I, I just sat there and I did not know that uh, he had moved closer to me. And uh, and of course, the next thing that happened was he shot me in the head. And like I said in my last, uh, you know, video that, you know, it really doesn't hurt. But uh, now I can't see. Again, my, my mouth is filling with uh, blood and bone chips and, uh, and I did not die. I did not die. And of course, you know, I, I, I slinked to the floor and, and laid around and waiting. And, you know, just waited. So I didn't know what to do. So he, uh, John wandered around, I think came back into the kitchen. I said, well, okay, well, this is probably when he's going to finish me off because he knows I'm still alive. And I, I heard a shot and I heard his body hit the ground. And 11 labored breaths later, and I counted all those breaths of his until everything was silent. So I believe he died. So picture this. Two dead bodies in the kitchen and me. I'm still alive. Now what? <laughs> anyway, I, I, I waited till morning. I, I, I got into their bed to warm up and waited till morning and uh, found my way out to the road. And it's interesting how one can adapt because uh, you take it for granted but there's a difference between feeling a carpet uh, the hardwood and cement and asphalt and I could tell the difference now and I remembered what that cul-de-sac looked like I remember uh, the surrounding homes and then this was early morning because uh, the birds were chirping so I it was early morning that woke me up I'm now in, I'm in the middle of the road, the cul-de-sac, with a their bread, bed spread around me, you know, blood all over the place. And I did hear a 
neighbor open up their door, guessing to pick up a early morning paper, called for help, and uh, emergency services were great. They they got there in a few minutes, and off I was to a hospital. Yeah. And uh, the the start of my new life, and uh, you know, without without vision, what I found was that yeah, you quickly adapt, but by listening, and thank goodness uh, I could still you know hear. And to listen to the sounds of life, whether it be cars, people talking, uh, uh, often you you think the wind might be talking to you because th there's like communication there. And then you can feel the sun on you, which is uh, energizing. Uh, you, you can feel, feel cold. You, you can feel the breeze. Uh, but the main thing is you can feel life, and somehow I was still alive. So here, uh, from the 2003 uh, car wreck to 2007 shooting, uh, one, I should be dead, but I wasn't. Okay. What left was my vision, two, eye two eyeballs, right? And I had to decide what I wanted to do with my life. I mean, what do you do? All the money's gone. Uh, we were almost homeless. And, you know, thanks to a wonderful wife uh, of mine, we weren't. And, you know, I've, I've got three kids and uh, my, my mother and my mother-in-law to take care of. So what now? Well, in the rest of the 2007 year, I had to heal and I went through a jaw surgery, which I uh, had my jaw uh, operated on uh, so I could open and close again, and uh, it had to be wired shut for three months. <laughs> that wasn't too much fun, because <laughs> uh, my, my my meals consisted of uh, these syringes of goo, <laughs> and that that went on for uh, you know three months, and uh, my jaw worked. But uh, here I am with the uh, facial numbness, lip numbness, and bullet shrapnel still trapped in my lower jaw. So. Uh, and, you know, they have to sew back my, my tongue, these, these skillful surgeons. And um, emergency medicine in our country is uh, uh, is the best, by the way. Saved my life twice. And the, the, those ER surgeons, the staff, you know, nurses, technicians, the lab folks, all top, top notch. Okay, so in, in our country, emergency services uh, um, are, are just terrific, and, and they do save lives. So... Um, a big thanks to all those people that the first responders who came and got me, and uh, you know, we do have a great uh, uh, medical system here for emergency services. Okay, so uh, I, I'm very thankful for that. Okay, so gained back my strength, went went back to the health club that I was uh, teaching at and where, where I was doing personal training, and uh, uh, taught. Uh, my yoga Pilates classes for a while, and uh, then came the end of the year, and uh, you know things changed, and you know what we're heading into 2008 now. I said, you know, I I need to get uh, some help here to how to get along in life as a blind person. So I uh, signed up or called where a friend of mine had called the Department of Services for the Blind, and it took eight months to get in, but I I, I got into their program. Uh, called the OTC, which is Orientation and Training Center, and this was a place in Seattle, and they housed uh, some uh, of us blind folks at a nearby hotel, in a hotel, uh, a, a a building, apartment building, and then uh, you know it was a two and a half block uh, walk to this place, to the center, or we could uh, catch a ride, and but anyway, I was uh, around other blind folks, and and. Uh, you know, I, I took classes for nine months, and those classes were uh, in Braille, uh, in uh, in mobility with a cane, in bus travel, and trying to figure out the uh, north, south, east, and west, trying to cross busy streets, and you know, listening for traffic, and then seeing when it was the right time to go or not. And uh, I'll tell you, you know, walking a straight line when you can't see is a lot harder to, to do than you think. 
you think you're walking straight, but you're either going to veer right or veer left, and you won't know until you hit something. And then uh, it wasn't until I could uh, learn how to use a cane that, you know, that would be my new eyes. Because uh, uh, that tapping sound let, let me know it was ahead of me. And uh, you're automatically listening. You're listening to what's going on. Because you can figure out when traffic is going with you, against you, coming at you, going away from you. And uh, you orient yourself. Uh, you, you find out where you're at and act accordingly. And so, anyway, uh, th that got taught to me. And, you know, Braille, an interesting thing. You've heard of it before, but it was named after this uh, young child called Louis Braille, French guy, French young man, uh, who lost his sight uh, by infection. And what he did was uh, he took... Uh, uh, Oh, the, this the, the, this teletype type of system uh, of dots and uh, translated that in, into the alphabet. Um, so uh, anyway, because he wanted to learn, so uh, it, thanks to him, uh, he created this uh, uh, language of Braille, which are you know these raised dots on a on a paper that can uh, spell out words. And that's been since translated into languages from all over the world, but that allows us, uh, you know, to uh, uh, blind people to be able to read. Okay. And uh, and now technology has come up with uh, more digital recorders and things you can listen to, of course. But uh, it, it's uh, for me a new life because now it's uh, you're uh, for me <laughs> blind broke, but I tell you what, not broken. All right, just not broken. And I decided what, because that was all I knew, traditional education, right? So after learning how to use the computer uh, with this uh, mechanical voice, uh, that we call it JAWS, and it's a product of Freedom Scientific, the, the computer reads to you. And we have to learn certain keystrokes to get it to work, of course. But I wanted to go back to school. So I enrolled in graduate school, uh, two of them, one in counseling psychology, one in addictions uh, counseling. I said, oh, yeah, I'll just be a counselor. Okay, and uh, well, went through, I think, uh, a year each of both those programs and, and it's found that uh, I wanted more than that. I, I wanted to uh, be more than the counselor. I, I wanted to uh, change lives. I wanted to change lives. So I put together uh, what I've learned over the years, uh, how uh, both these unexpected events, traumas, tragedies, tragedies, whatever you want to call them, how it affect how they affected me, and how I dealt with them, and uh, to somehow use it uh, to foster me along, to, to get me to uh, live my greatest life, and from from there I created a program. And uh, the name of this video series, Transforming Adversity into Opportunity, Tayo. Okay. Uh, taking your worst tragedy, your worst trauma, and turning, in, turning it into your greatest opportunity, your greatest open door. And I've uh, been teaching that you know, ever since. But uh, people have said, you know, there's probably no good thing that comes out of blindness, right? I said, ah, yes and no, because everything comes in two, two sides, two parts. Right. I've met so many wonderful people since the blindness, and it, it's changed me. And uh, it forced me to grow. Yeah, it, it forced me to become a better person. And that uh, not forced me, but I, I chose to do that because uh, I got a lot of stuff left. And I always wonder to myself why I'm still alive. How come God didn't let me die? And... Yeah, I'm grateful for that. And with my remaining life on Earth, I want to, you know, do good. I want to do good, not only for for me, but for my family, and to show those other folks, not only blind people, or people that have undergone unexpected tragedy or trauma, or were born that way, is that with the right attitude, with the dream, commitment to that dream, a lot of good things happen. And you know that law of attraction does really work because I've attracted into my life so many good things now 
that was uh, basically invisible before. I have my own radio show, Be the Change, on the Pyramid One Network. And the owner of that, Bob Charles, is the co-host of my show. I would never have met him nor even known something like that existed unless it was the blindness. I have a wonderful YouTube show uh, given many names over the years, but now it's New Enlightened Lifestyle Medicine. I've got this great co-host, uh, Patrick Herbert, who I had learned of uh, from the uh, radio show. Because he's a writer, uh, researcher, journalist. And what inspired me to look him up was that you know, he had written an article that was printed in, in a, a publication uh, and it was on the bankruptcy of America. I mean, you know, it's a valuable information and you know, just incredible writing. But at the end, what really uh, got my attention was that he went through something called an enlightenment. I didn't know what the hell that was. So I, I got his email and, and contacted him and uh, we became uh, good friends. And now he's a co-host to my show. And I learned so much from him uh, of how he lives. But uh, his rule of life, unconditional love. I say, well, what the hell is that? And so I, I learned from that, and like he uh, uh, is one that his attitude changed through this enlightening enlightenment, and uh, he lives, uh, you know, that one concept, unconditional love. So anyway, a lot of good things have come come out because of the blindness, and yeah, I don't like uh, being broken blind, but things are always uh, moving and, and looking up. I've got these great shows. I've got a great, wonderful blog, and uh, I I get to thanks to the the internet, I work with people from all over the world, and I get to teach them that program, transforming adversity into opportunity, and uh, it not only works for folks on the personal level to get them to be, you know, uh, yeah, better people or to find out the goodness they have inside of them, or the best is to find out what's holding them back. Those, these are all subconscious fears or some conscious limiting thoughts that happened long ago that have been ingrained in their subconscious, their psyche for all these years. And it's an invisible barrier, an invisible shackle, an invisible lead weight. But uh, a lot of folks can't shed it because when it's invisible, it's become part of who they are, part of their identity. So it's like I get to help them shed all those things. You know, all because of those two things that happened to me, that, that near fatal car wreck and the shooting. And uh, I get to say, uh, because I'm still alive, I beat a bullet. I beat a bullet. I don't want to try it again, but you know, I beat a bullet. And I want to turn this into something. I want to turn my life into something. I want to contribute more, be more, do more, you know, have more. I want to grow. Okay. And uh, come along in this journey with me. And uh, you already have, and thank you for all the wonderful comments. And all of you out there who've undergone your own traumas, trage tragedies, and uh, downturns like that, the unexpected, uh, write to me. D tell me how you're doing and how you did it. Okay, because uh, I'd like to compile all that and, and let people know what's out there. And especially times like this uh, in our very world of tumult. <laughs> And uh, uh, I, I think uh, we have a new president. I'm not sure. Uh, the, the, the one that we had previously the past four years and this, this new one here, you know, they're, they're both crooks and criminals. Okay. And, but that's the way it is. And it's up to us to be leaders, to be leaders, to live that life that we most love to live. I think I can help you with that. And if you're stuck, let me know. But... Uh, Perhaps we can do it together. Okay. And uh, I would say this, uh, where I'm at right now, uh, I'm still blind, but not, I'm not broke. I have a very rich life. Finances are getting better all the time. And I get to meet more and more people and allow them to grow. Because we have that all inside of us and we can unlock it if we know how. And the other part is if we want to, we got to believe it. And you know, I, I got these neat sayings that I have created over the years, but uh, one of them is you have to believe it before you can see it. 
Because for me, and it is for you, life happens through you, for you. Figure that out. Life happens through you, for you. Because uh, life can be as great as we want, if we believe it to be so. And we, and when, if we go out and we go get it. And better yet, if we go and create it. Hey, thanks for tuning in. If you like this, uh, you know, please, uh, you know, subscribe uh, uh, to Transforming Adversity into Opportunity and, and tune in. And please tell your friends also. The other is that uh, take a look at my YouTube show, New Enlightened Lifestyle Medicine, and subscribe to that, please, because we have great information there. And, you know, more than just uh, health and nutrition, but uh, it's lifestyle and, and how we can uh, turn something into something else and how to unleash greatness and my radio show be the change on the pyramid one network it feeds the 132 countries and all because <laughs> i'm blind and i got to call up barb charles and and say hey i like a show and uh, he goes oh okay and learned a lot from him and thanks to him i have a show that uh, reaches to many countries in the world and uh thanks to the internet and youtube and my co-host uh, patrick herbert I have this uh, just a exploding YouTube show, okay, and uh, all all because of the blindness. And then uh, there is a God law called uh, the law of increase, and what that means is uh, we're, we're not meant to stay the same. We're meant to grow, okay, and up to us of what that growth is like, and it's a wonderful thing to share it. So anyway, th thanks for tuning in. I'll check you out next time. Bye bye now.